What's up guys, back at it again today with something special. In today's video, we'll be checking out the Funny Playing Retro Pixel IPS LCD 2.5D for the Game Boy Color. This is the newest Funny Playing IPS screen for the Game Boy Color that offers all the same features as their standard laminated IPS screens, but now the lens features these sleek rounded edges. The IPS screen itself is laminated to the lens kind of like a smartphone, which on the Game Boy Color look absolutely stunning. Here's a quick look at the finished product with a side-by-side -side of some Donkey Kong Country, one of my personal favorites. The first thing we'll need to do to install this kit on our Game Boy Color is disassemble our device. There are six tri-wing screws on the back of the device, four here and two more inside the battery compartment. You'll need a tri-wing screwdriver to remove these, but they're easily found online. After we have all those screws removed, we can remove the back part of the shell. The next thing we'll need to do is remove these three Phillips screws that hold down the board. After that, we'll have to pop up these little tabs here and remove the ribbon cable. Be careful not to damage the ribbon cable. They are kind of delicate, but you should have no problem. The board is actually all we need from this Game Boy Color. We can just set aside the old buttons, membranes, and screen. All of the parts in today's video were sent to us by RetroModding.com. Although they did send us all of these parts for free, I am not being paid to make this video and I will always give my honest review of any products to get reviewed on this channel. I really don't see any point in misleading my subscribers just to make a few bucks through affiliate sales. With that being said, we decided to go with this green IPS ready transparent shell as well as some yellow buttons and membranes. I was kind of going for a jungle green N64 with Donkey Kong look and right out of the box I really like how everything looks. The IPS kit itself comes with the one IPS LCD with laminated screen lens of your choice. I went with black because I, I thought it looked good with everything, but there are other colors. It also comes with the one ribbon cable with the control board already attached as well as a touch sensor. There is an extra touch sensor included if you wanted to move it around because there is no longer a need to solder one onto the board, which I thought was a cool upgrade on this kit itself. You also get the two 120 millimeter wires for start and select, as well as one 50 millimeter wire for the power. I really like how this kit looks. Also included in the box are some stickers for the back of the LCD to block any potential light leaks or shorts. And here are those little wires and the extra touch sensor. The next thing we'll have to do here is set up the IPS screen itself. The first thing I'm going to do here is remove the ribbon cable slash control board from the back of the LCD to make it a little easier to work on this project. I didn't do the best job applying the big sticker on the back of the IPS screen, but it worked out just fine. I always seem to struggle when it comes to applying stickers, as you may know if you've seen some of my other videos. After that, I'm going to go ahead and pre-tin some of these solder points on the board to make it a little easier for me later on. This video is definitely not a tutorial on how to solder as I'm still a beginner myself so I would recommend checking out another video if you are interested in learning how to solder. The next thing I'll do is solder on the necessary wires to those solder points. Here are the start and select. I really struggle to stay steady when it comes to soldering on these little points but everything seemed to work out. Next, we'll get that control board and ribbon cable snapped back on the back of the LCD. It is highly recommended to test out your IPS screens before fully installing them into the shells as there's nothing you can do if it's already installed in the shell but it turns out to be faulty. So what I'm going to do here is take the IPS screen ribbon cable and insert it back into the board, pop down those little tabs to lock it into place, and then we will solder on the power switch to that little VIA Mark C. 
Next, we'll grab the back of the shell to you temporarily use the battery compartment. After I pop in some batteries, I'll use my little spudger tool here to flip the power switch and see if everything's working. And perfect, everything seems to be in full working order. The most difficult part of this entire project for me was soldering on the start and select wires to these tiny little vias on the board. So after I was pretty sure I connected the wires correctly, I added some capped on tape to help ensure that nothing came loose. After that I removed the adhesive strips from the back of the IPS screen and popped it into the IPS ready shell, which is super simple because the shell was designed for these screens. If you intend on using an original shell, some shell trimming will be required. I ran my fingers down the screen to make sure that everything was snapped into place. In retrospect, I should have probably put the screen protector back on before doing this because I did get some fingerprints on the screen. So for the rest of the project, I'll keep this on just to make sure I don't scratch anything. Now we can get the ribbon cable slash control board back on and get the new buttons and membranes installed. Aftermarket D-pads do tend to sit a little lower than the originals, so Retro Modding included this 3D printed D-pad riser as a nice added touch. From experience, these D-pad risers make a world of difference. After that, we can fold the board back over and get everything put back together. When I do this, I just try to make sure that the speaker is lined up and then I check everything else. Now we can slip the touch sensor into the shell. I really love how the touch sensor comes pre-attached on these new kits. The touch sensor works through the plastic and gives us control to all the screen's functions. Next, we can reinsert the three Phillips screws that hold down the shell. I highly recommend using the new screws as opposed to the originals that don't tend to fit perfectly. Lastly, we can pop in the power switch and infrared sensor shield, then we can close up the shell. After that, all there's left to do is insert some batteries and test this thing out. After turning this thing on for the first time, I was immediately blown away by how crisp and vibrant this screen really is. This IPS screen has a fast refresh rate with no blur, as well as a 25% larger than stock display. That 25% improves the Game Boy Color experience significantly, but it's not so big as to obscure the game's original aspect ratio. Just look at how beautiful the Donkey Kong Country opening screen is. I had a really hard time putting this thing down to test out the other features. The D-pad feels amazing with that 3D printed riser and all the other buttons feel just as good. The attention to detail when it comes to these funny playing IPS screens is super impressive. Holding down both start and select will enter function mode, where you can change the color of the Game Boy Color logo as well as adjust the screen position both vertically and horizontally. I went with green for now. These IPS screens combined with the IPS ready shells are remarkably well done. All the seams around the console are perfect and the buttons move freely as intended. Here's a comparison of the screen on the IPS kit next to a 101 model Game Boy SP. Even on the SP's highest brightness setting, there really is no comparison. Although I will admit the lights kind of wash out the display on the SP, you can just compare it side by side this funny playing IPS under the same lights. The funny playing retro pixel IPS LCD 2.5D for the Game Boy Color truly brings this Game Boy into the modern age. I've only had this thing for a couple of days now and it's already been so much fun to go back and re-experience some of my old favorites. The Nintendo Game Boy Color specifically is a handheld console that is near and dear to my heart. I can remember many late night car rides trying to evolve my Charmander under the passing streetlights. If I can go back in time and show myself this Game Boy, I would have truly been blown away. I want to send a massive thank you out to RetroModding.com for sending us this screen to review and an equally massive thank you to everyone for checking out this video. Until next time, have fun and keep on gaming. Happy Holidays.